So now that we've characterized uh, the solution of our uh, dynamic model of slack, we can look at the effect of shocks, demand shock supply shocks on you know market tightness, output, employment. Uh, so we'll proceed uh, by comparative statics. So here we have a dynamic model. So comparative statics means that you will have a permanent unexpected shock that's going to occur. Um, as we know here, our model is going to jump from one position to the, to the next position immediately. Um, you know, as we've argued before, there are no transition dynamics, and then it'll be a new position. And the question is, how does the new position after the shock compares to the previous position before the shock? So that's, that's the goal. So comparative statics. We are going to look at the effect of a permanent unexpected uh, shock. All right, so let's start with aggregate demand shocks. Um, so we are going to look at a negative aggregate demand shock. Okay, so that's a shock that's going to lead to lower output. Um, so what could be a, a negative uh, aggregate demand shock? Well, so you remember the expression for the aggregate demand, it was y d of theta is equal to, um, so the expression for the aggregate demand shock is y d of theta is equal to delta minus r, uh, divided by sigma prime of zero epsilon times one over one plus tau of theta epsilon minus one. Okay, uh, so here we are looking at a shock that's going to contract aggregate demand and, and, look, and uh, lead to less output. So what could this be? Well, you can see that if you have uh, a lower discount rate delta If you lower the discount rate here, uh, of course, that's going to lead to less aggregate demand. You can see that another parameter that's key for the aggregate demand here is the marginal utility of wealth. Um, you can see that if this marginal utility of wealth becomes uh, larger, that also leads to a lower aggregate demand. So we can consider these two shock. We can consider either a decrease in delta is a discount rate or we can consider an increase in the marginal utility of wealth which is sigma prime of zero um, and you know the reason intuitively why these things would lead to less aggregate demand well if you have a higher marginal utility of wealth means that people derive so that you know accumulating wealth becomes more attractive. Um, as a result, spending your uh, income on services becomes relatively less attractive. And so what households want to do is take their income and save instead of spend. So that's going to, of course, dep depress uh, aggregate demand. If the discount rate uh, falls, what happens is that you discount the future less. So you know, saving here, you do it partly to accumulate social status, but of course, you also save partly to consume in the future. If you discount the future less, consuming in the future becomes more attractive compared to consuming today. So that would lead people again to shift some of their income towards saving and future consumption at the expense of today's consumption. So that will also lead to lower aggregate demand. So these two things, either a decrease in the discount rate delta or an increase in the marginal utility of wealth sigma prime of zero, both of them would lead to a lower aggregate demand, you know. Um, so that's the type of shock we're looking at. So now, what's the effect of that shock on the model? Well, we can use our uh, diagram to look at this. Um, so I'm going to put, as usual, so we'll use the standard diagram. So we have uh, zero here. I'm putting market tightness on the vertical axis. As usual, output on the horizontal axis. Here I have A times H, the capacity of my economy. Let's see. Here I can have, I'll have my aggregate supplies that always look like this. Y S 
of theta, I have my aggregate demand. It's going to look like this. Right, and I have my initial solution of the model before the shock, that's here. So here I have output, here I have tightness, and using the diagram, what I can do is figure out what's going to happen to tightness, what's going to happen to output after the shock, and another thing that will be interesting is what happens to employment, unemployment, that we can we can figure it out uh, in the next step. So here we are saying that we have a negative aggregate demand shock. So, all oh right, and something I should point out, so here, this point here, it's theta m, uh, you know, the tightness at which the matching wedge is infinite, that's not affected by our aggregate demand shock at all, so this is going to stay the same. So basically, the aggregate demand shock is going to rotate around this point, and after a negative aggregate demand shock, you'll get something like this. Okay, and so uh, so this is what we have. Uh, so where is the new solution of the model here? It's going to be here. And as you can see, so we can see immediately here there's no ambiguity. Tightness is going to be lower. Output is going to be lower. So we have lower tightness, lower uh, output. Okay, and so the idea is of course here, you have negative aggregate demand shock, people want to spend less, and so, you know, as a result, there'll be less output that's going to be uh, traded, that's going to be produced, and you have a lower market tightness also, uh, because, you know, of course, the people want to consume less, they post, uh, you know, they are going to post fewer uh, vacancies, and you'll have more people that will remain unemployed, and so that would, you know, that leads to a lower tightness. So all of this is very intuitive. So that's a typical idea we have uh, of the type of shock that would create a recession. People want to spend less, markets become slacker, less tight, and so you have also less output. So here is a summary of the impact of a negative aggregate demand shock. So we said it's either, we can model it in two ways, it's either the discount rate delta falls, or uh, the marginal utility of wealth goes up, but in both cases, people want to spend less. So what happens after negative aggregate demand shock? So market tightness uh, falls, output falls. Okay, so then you can ask like, what happens to employment? Uh, employment, well, here it's very easy. We have a linear production function. So employment is just output divided by labor productivity. So employment, uh, is going to fall. Uh, so this is, of course, this is tightness, this is output. This is employment. Uh, and the last thing that we could wonder is what happens to the unemployment rate. Well, but you know that the unemployment rate u uh, is directly a function of uh, theta. In fact, we said that the unemployment rate is separation rate lambda divided by separation rate plus f of theta. So here, the only thing that happens is that theta falls, f of theta, which is a job finding rate, is going to fall, and so the unemployment rate is going to increase. So this is really your typical business cycle chart. You have a negative shock with less output, less employment, more unemployment, uh, lower tightness. So that's a negative aggregate demand shock. So the comparative statics, uh, where we look at the effect of an increase in the marginal utility of wealth is quite interesting because in fact, it's exactly the same thing that happens here as uh, the, you know, the paradox of thrift that was de described by Keynes. So here we've seen that uh, when sigma prime of zero goes up, then output uh, falls. Okay, uh, so this is exactly the same as a Keynesian 
paradox of thrift. So what's the paradox of thrift? Uh, that's something that Keynes had described. So it's this situation where everybody wants to save more, uh, but however, because uh, the uh, savings available in the economy are fixed, then when everybody wants to save more, what happens is that they're going to cut their consumption to save more, but because the aggregate amount of saving is fixed, the only thing that, we, that will happen at the end of the day is that everybody will consume less, uh, but the total amount of savings uh, will be unchanged in the economy. Okay, so it's a bit paradoxical that people start with this idea that they want to save more. At the end, they save exactly the same, but they consume less. Here, it's exactly the same. So when the marginal utility of wealth goes up, what happens is that people want to save more relative to their uh, to their neighbors because, uh, say, social status becomes more important. Um, but what happens at the end of the day, because everybody is exactly the same, your relative savings will still be the same as your neighbor. So also, even if everybody cares more about social status, at the end of the day, their position on the social ladder would be exactly the same. Um, but because they care more about savings relative to consumption, you know, that depresses, in a sense here, what happens is that the relative, uh, you know, in aggregate, the social status that's available is fixed, you know, your relative position, if everybody saves more because everybody behaves the same at the end, you're still the same as everybody else. So your relative position is fixed. Um, and so what this uh, extra, you, you know, this desire to climb up the social ladder, the only thing that it does is that it's going to lead to less aggregate demand and therefore less output uh, at the end of the day. Um, so you get exactly the same intuition is that, uh, because, but here it's because your social position, uh, of course, it's all relative. So if everybody cares more about it, then, you know, everybody is going to try to save more, but at the end, everybody will just save the same. So nobody will move on the social ladder, but everybody will just have less uh, less output at the end of the day. And we know that market will be uh, will be slacker. So you capture exactly that idea of paradox or thrift here in the model uh, in a very simple way. Uh, 